Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you are a Godot developer, I have great news for you. If you're not, I have news for you. Uh, Godot 3.2 Alpha is here. Uh, so you can go ahead, you can download it now. 3.2 is one step closer, and it's probably a lot closer than you think. A lot of times when you think Alpha, you think, oh, God, it's going to take forever. Nope. This is going to be a pretty fast schedule, as we will see in just a second. Now, before I want to move on, I want to point out this background image. I took this from the Godot blog, but it's actually coming from an upcoming action-adventure game called Resolution, two eyes, by the way, um, by Monolith of Minds. It's coming out in early 2020, and yeah, yeah, it is made by Godot. Otherwise, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, would it? Anyways, thought I'd give credit there before I moved on. So now we're heading on over to the Godot blog. You will see here uh, the announcement. So I will obviously link all this stuff down below. But we'll get most of the summary here. Uh, it's been seven months, and 4,000 commits since 3.1 was released. Uh, 4,000 commits, in case you're not a GitHub person, that's 4,000 source code changes up to the, the main repository. Um, you're now happy to release Godot 3.2 Alpha 1. Now, this is all kind of sort of meaningless in an open source project. That's just kind of an official snapshot, although Alpha 1 has a very important distinguishment that we will see in a second. But you've been able to build and run Godot 3.2 for months and months. In fact, I've done a number of videos on a lot of the features that are in Godot 3.2 by just downloading and building it myself. So you're going to have a little bit of this channel has been somewhat spoilery of what is coming in 3.2 because, frankly, I've been covering a lot of the highlight features as they were uh, in development. So uh, anyways, let's go on back here. It took a little bit longer than they planned because the Android build system and packaging specifically for C Sharp support on Android uh, required a build server upgrade as well. Uh, they've been in the alpha stage since August 31st. Uh, yeah, August 31st. And they have not been idle in the meantime. It's quite stable. Now, what exactly is that major difference I said about an alpha versus a not alpha with an open source project? Well, this one. It is a feature freeze. Uh, that means that no more pull requests, no more new stuff is going into this version. The features are set in stone. And at worst, I suppose you'd say, a feature can be removed. But there's no more adding. And that's so you keep from having feature creep. Things aren't constantly being churned and changed and so on. So they are... Um, Godot 3.12 is also coming as well, uh, but since they're getting to this point, they're actually going to be start moving quite a bit faster. So they expect it to be released, stable released, uh, within, uh, let's see, one to two months should be possible. So before the end of the year, hopefully, Godot 3.2 will be a thing, but the alpha is very mature now. I'm not saying use it in production environment by any means, uh, but like I said, it has been well tested. It should be good to go. Now, if you're interested in grabbing it, um, the downloads are available in this link. And of course, I will link this and I will link the release notes we're going to check out in just a second. Uh, so if you want to learn more, you can learn more. Now, here we are in the change log. There are no release notes yet, so we're going basically from a, a, a kind of a work in progress release notes. And I'm not going to go through all of this just because, well, because of this. So yeah, uh, I'm going to go through some of the highlight features. The stuff kind of near the top is pretty much the higher level stuff, but there is a ton of smaller stuff that I've not necessarily covered. Uh, so we got pseudo 3D. We'll get back to that in a second. Support for 3D scenes using ass imp assets. Uh, I think Asset Importer is what it stands for. It's an open source project for open supporting just tons and tons and tons of files. Well, the nice part about that is we can now import FBX files. Love, love them or hate them, FBX is the lingua franca of Autodesk software, and it is kind of an industry standard. So finally being able to uh, import FBX in addition to DAE, nice move there. Uh, support for generating audio procedural. We'll get back to that in a second. I've also already done a video on that one in the past. WebRTC support, so real-time communication. Uh, it enables support for high-level multiplayer APIs and support NAT traversal using stun or turn. Uh, this should also be useful for their new upcoming integration with Nakama, or Nakami. I forget which pronunciation it was, the uh, backend server that just sponsored the Godot project. Um, support for automatically building Android templates before exporting. Support for major for support for texture atlases in 2D, which is a little strange because this feature actually used to be in Godot and was removed for some reason. And well, now it's back. And texture atlas is basically a way you automatically put a bunch of images into a single image. It's faster, it's more optimized, it's better use of space, and so on and so forth. Um, Improvements to the visual shader, a number of them. So visual shader got a lot of love. I think a lot of this actually also came from uh, the Google Summer of Code work that was done as well. Uh, visual scripting also got some love. Don't worry, I'm coming back on the visual shader thing, by the way. Um, 
Support for enabling disabling parts of the editor. Now this one I don't see a whole lot of use for, but I, I, other people really do, is you can turn parts of Godot off. So if you wanna make it an artist only tool, you can just turn off all the programming stuff. Um, so it, the focus there would be for education or we're working with artists to make it harder for them to mess things up. So you can turn parts of the, the uh, editor off and on now. Uh, language server for GDScript, this is kind of cool because you're going to get better tool support from things like Visual Studio Code and so on, so you can have better profiling or debugging um, code and integration between it. it. It's a way of communicating back to Godot uh, about what's running and going on with scripts. Nice to see that there. Um, uh, version control integration in the editor. Um, agnostic to the actual type, improved grid, um, grid map editor, improved mesh library generation, uh, improved control and anchor workflow, a net file, network profile. This is actually kind of nice. So in addition to just normal profiling, you can actually track like how much you're sending across the wire, how long it's taking and that kind of stuff. So if you're creating a network game, a network profiler is obviously going to be useful to you. Improvements to the navigation mesh generation. Um, and then we're kind of getting into the weeds on stuff. Um, you know, all nice features, but a lot of these things are, uh, you know, implementation level or, or, you know, just a little bit less fun to talk about. And on top of that, we also have a number of, like I said, it just kind of keeps going and going and going and going. Uh, we also got AR kit support on iOS, uh, partial clipboard support for HTML5 platforms, um, support for uh, Visual Studio 2019's MS build system. So that's actually kind of nice. I'm actually getting close to the point where I can remove Visual Studio 2017 from my computer, which would be a nice thing. Uh, new Godot constants to conditionally react to system variables at compile time. And then we've got a bunch of changes and I'm not even gonna gloss over them because my, my mousing finger is getting kind of sore. So there's gonna be formal release notes coming soon. We've just got the change logs for now, but as you see, there's a lot of stuff being changed and uh, being added in the release of Godot 3.2. Now, let's jump back to a couple of things we talked about. The first one is pseudo 3D support. This sounds kind of scary, uh, but it really isn't. It's like making it look like a 2D game is in 3D. And the way this is done is basically you can now scale. So you can have, see how you've got kind of this offset going on, it makes it look like there's 3D going here. It's by, you can create things into canvas layer and each canvas layer in turn can now be scaled to different sizes dynamically. Um, so you can make it feel like things are, you know, extruded out or in 3D when they're actually still being done in 2D. Um, so pretty straightforward and you can also preview it in game, but it's mostly just adding this scale factor, uh, follow viewport and scaling uh, to each canvas layer in your, uh, in your scene. Next up, we have the new audio features. Now this is what's really cool here basically is you can now do programmatic audio creation. You can create a buffer in memory of bytes, of waveforms and literally dump them out so that you can actually create really advanced um, functionality. You can do dynamic music or dynamic sound effects. You could basically create a music creation tool using Godot because of this new functionality, which is definitely a nice change there. And then we've got the visual shader upgrade. Now this was heavily done through Summer of Code, I believe. Uh, there's been a ton of changes to the uh, visual shader area, uh, reorgs of the user interface, all of the notes in, have been organized into categories and are easier to work with. We've got um, improvements to the actual workflow um, of actually creating and um, building nodes together, collapsing things out. And then a bunch of uh, things were exposed out that weren't previously. So um, creating sh uh, visual shaders should be uh, a lot more pleasant now, uh, and you've got a lot more capability. I actually did a video on this entirely, so and it would take an entire video to really get into the depth of everything that changed here. And to be honest, this is actually the next tutorial I have in mind for Godot anyway, so I'm glossing over this for the most part, because um, I'm going to do a tutorial on uh, visual shaders in a very, very short period of time. So just be aware that there is a ton of new functionality exposed and the process of editing visual shaders is a lot more pleasant. Same with the uh, visual programming language. I I'm not a huge fan of it yet. So even with refinements to the workflow, it's just not there yet as a recommendation, but the shader stuff definitely is. This is, this is an area where I recommend people, especially if you're not used to using um, GLSL or HLSL, the shaders are completely new to you. This is a nice way to get started. Plus you can also do an automatic conversion over to a normal shader for from a visual shader anyway. So, and nice to see these improvements here. Um, 
and then that is it. So if you want to check it out, again, I will toss this link down below to the, this and to the release notes, um, but the, the original announcement is where the downloads are available. You see you can get downloads in both the classical build, and if you want C-sharp support, grab the mono build. If you do not care about C-sharp, you don't need to grab this one. Really, the only difference is this size, and this, this can be a little bit confusing. Oh, no, I just, actually, it says right there. Before, I thought it said just C-sharp support. So the mono build is also the classical build. So basically, it's all all that plus the mono libraries and stuff built in. It's just a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter because it's got the mono runtime attached. So that is it. That is the um, Godot 3.2 Alpha. What you see here in terms of features, this is what you can expect. Now, I know there's going to be a question that many of you have. Okay, what about Vulkan? Vulkan is not happening. Vulkan is in 4.2. Oh, and I was actually thinking about doing a video about it because there have been so many announcements about the great progression that is being made on that branch. But that is a separate thing. That is going to be the next version of um, Godot. So once this one ships, once, once um, it becomes stable, then we'll start seeing the Vulkan backend being ported over to this functionality. But the fortunate thing is it doesn't sound like uh, Godot 4 is going to be like a year off. Hopefully it will be um, you know, just a few months after this release that we start getting at least alpha and beta versions of it to check out. But no, nope, no Vulkan in 3.2. That is coming in 4.0, but that development is happening in parallel. So don't worry. It's not going to be way down the road. It's just not here yet. All right, that's it. Let me know what you thought of uh, Godot uh, 3.2, at least in alpha form. Is everything in there that you'd like to see? Um, yeah, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.